In this first video, I want to talk to you about bar charts. I'm here in my Jupyter Notebook inside of Microsoft Edge, my web browser. I have navigated to the folder that contains the files that I want to work with. And in my case, it's in my OneDrive file. I've created a folder called YouTube and inside of that a data vis visualization with a plot for Python. I have a style sheet, a cascading style sheet that will be uploaded to GitHub so that you can use that as well. I have a Python cheat sheet, a PDF, which I'll also download. You can get that from the Plotly website. There's a style template, which I just always save just to open up and it's got the bare bones of which I want to work with. But here's the file we're looking for, the simple bar chart. Let's open that up. And there you go, everything is ready. You'll see the first cell that I have here is just the import of the cascading style sheet. It's ipython.core.display and from that I import HTML. I reference the file, this cascading style sheet file and that lives in the same folder as this notebook and I just use the HTML function there, open the CSS file in read mode and we read it and if I execute that you'd see that I have this new style. I have my H1 color of uh, the text here being blue, the H2 being this nice orange, etc. Just styles uh, the notebook for me. So let's have a look at the simple bar chart. Now, first of all, I want to set up my Plotly library. And what we're going to use here is called uh, notebook mode. So I don't want to have these files uploaded to the Plotly website uh, to live in the cloud. I just want to use them locally. So I'm going to use the notebook mode. So from plotly.offline, I'm going to import iplot and init notebook mode, as you can see here. And I'm just going to call this function init notebook mode. So if we run this, that'll just import this iplot and uh, initializing this notebook mode and it'll initialize this notebook mode. So what do we actually want to import from Plotly? Well, we're going to start off with these high-level charts. So bar charts, charts, scatter charts, etc. These are high-level and I can just use them as is. So I can say import Plotly.graph objects, so graph underscore objs as geo, as go. Let's do that. So let's start off with a very bare bones chart. The first thing we want to set up is just what is called the, 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 the trace. Uh, we call it trace here as just a computer variable, but that just creates on, on top of the figure that we are creating this blank figure, we're going to put on these elements and it's just the norm or to call them trace. So go, remember that's my graph objects dot bar. So immediately the arguments here are, are specifically for a bar chart. That's why we call this high level chart. I don't have to to design every single little element. Most of it's already designed inside of this bar object and I just have to pass some uh, arguments to it. And I'm going to pass X arguments for the X axis and Y arguments for the Y axis. So what is a bar chart for? A bar chart is for categorical variables. So anything that is uh, not necessarily a number, although numbers can also be categorical variables, but they are not uh, numerical and as such as the difference between them are not set and standard. So I could call January, February, March 1, 2 and 3 for the first, second and third months of the year, but that does not make them numerical variables. They are, they are still in that instance categorical variables. So bar charts are for categorical variables. So my x-axis here, I'm going to have the categories January, February and March. And on my y-axis, I'm going to have numerical values. So how many things, whatever the situation might be. In my instance here, I'm going to use, you, you'll see later on, I'm going to call them sales. So in January, there were 10 unit sales in February 11 and in March 14. So those are numerical values on the Y axis, categorical variables on the X axis. Now I'm going to introduce a second computer variable. I'm going to call it data and I'm going to pass into that a list. So it goes inside of square brackets. I'm going to pass a list of all the traces these are these elements that go on top of my blank figure. And in this case, I only have one trace, but I've got to put that inside of these square brackets. I'm referencing trace here as a list element, an element inside of this list. Third computer variable that I use here is this fig. Now these are just standard. 
Um, they're used uh, in Plotly all the time, so might as well stick with those. And I'm going to call another graph object called a figure. That's a blank canvas, a blank figure. And figure, with a capital F as you can see there, it takes a couple of arguments. In this instance, we're only going to use one argument, and that's the data argument as you can see here. And we're going to set that equal to data, which is this data, which contains a list of trace, and the trace is a bar. So it just builds one thing on top of the other. So inside of this data that I'm referencing, there's a list. And the first element in the list is trace. And in trace is this element called a bar chart. Finally, I'm going to call iPlot. Remember, which we imported up here. iPlot. That's for plotting directly in the notebook. Not using uh, online mode. So not, not going to the cloud. And I'm going to plot this figure FIG fig that I've created. Let's hold down shift and hit enter or return. And there you go. Your first beautiful, your first very beautiful plotly chart. So again, we can see the x-axis here, January, February, March, and we can see the y-axis, the values that we put in 10, 11, and 14. Now I'm going to use my mouse on the left-hand side. Look what happens when I hover over the text, over this element, uh, this, this el the elements on this blank figure. So the go dot figure was this blank background, and I put these elements on top of it, which is on a high level was a bar chart. I hover over it and you see that January at the bottom it gets highlighted and the number 10 at the top gets highlighted. That's very nice. I really like that because if I give a presentation and I don't use PowerPoint for presentations, I'm not a PowerPoint user or fan. Well, I mean, you've got to use it sometime. But I try to stick with my Jupyter Notebooks and it's very nice to have this interactive plots as you do your presentations. And look what happened at the top here as well. I get quite a few little buttons here to press and that I really find very useful because I can download this plot as a PNG file directly on my hard drive and I can put that inside of a hard copy if I were writing a report and it's got to go inside of a Word document etc. I can just do that. I can save this uh, for editing in Chart Studio that's online in your Plotly online account. You can zoom, you can pan, you can select a box and we're going to see all of these because they become very useful. I can zoom in, I can zoom out out even further and out even further I can just go back home and that just resets everything for me I can show the closest data on hover so if I do this you're only going to see January being 10 February 11 March 14 and if I click that you see the highlight happens at the bottom on the x-axis and instead of on top at the at the top there and then I can just open uh, uh, plotly the website itself. So very nice, especially this download as PNG file. So that is fantastic. So let's add a little title because you can see at the top my chart has no title. So I'm going to introduce a new variable called layout and this layout is going to be a Python dictionary. So it goes inside of curly braces and it has the key value pair. So the key colon the value. The key is title and these go inside of quotation marks. So the title, that's the key, and the value for the dictionary for this key is sales for first quarter. Now I'm going to redo my fig from up here. It's still going to have the trace, it's still going to have the data. All I'm changing is this fig. So go.figure, the data still is the data from our first one, but the layout is now this dictionary called layout. So this data and layout, these are the argument names and the argument values well we gave the computer variables they're exactly the same name don't worry there won't be any confusion for python it'll understand and plotly this plotly f figure um, will understand what's going on so data just refers to th the data uh, that i created with a trace list and layout this layout refers to this layout so let's plot this shift enter shift return and now at the top i have sales for first quarter so a beautiful title now on the top of my figure. What about some axis labels? Now with these categories that we put in January, February, March, it's easy to see that these are months, but I might want to specify that. And more importantly, I want to specify what's on this Y axis because what is one, two, three, four, you know, you need to, you need to know what these are. So I'm going to just change my layout computer variable. It's still going to be a, a Python dictionary. Title is still going to be first quarter elements. Now the x-axis, that's the key, it holds a value, but the value is another dictionary. And that dictionary is again a key, 
and value pair. So the title is going to be months. And the same for y-axis. The key is y-axis. The value is another dictionary. And that dictionary contains a key value pair, the key being title and the value being units. Now I'm going to do something different. Remember up here, we just said data equals data and layout equals layout. But we're going to do something a bit different here. So instead of creating a blank figure, I'm just going to pass everything as a Python, uh, live, uh, as a Py Python dictionary. So here we have iplot. And inside of that, there's this dictionary. And the dictionary is just a key, va key value pair, comma, another key value pair. So data is just data, still the data from upstairs. And the layout is just this new layout. So let's shift and enter, shift and return. And now we can see that we have months here as our x-axis title and units as our y-axis title. So that's how many units were sold in January, February, and March. So see the difference here between the two. So I did not invoke the figure, the go.figure object here. I just passed every, everything to iplot as a dictionary. And sometimes it gets confusing because there's many ways in Plotly to do something. You'll see more ways as we carry on. So, so when it comes to the layout and, and, and such, I try to stick with these, just to stick with the Python dictionaries. When you stick with the dictionaries, it becomes slightly less confusing and, and you can, you can um, find something that's just you know, stuck in your mind and it works for you and just carry on with that. So I like just to use for layout and then plotting just the this dictionary way of doing things, although you don't have to stick with that, as we could see here. Here we created this blank figure and we pass these arguments to it, but I can also just use it as a pass to iplot, just a dictionary. And, and as I say, there are many things that I can do with this x-axis, this x-axis being a key and the value pair. There are many more things than just a title, and we'll see some of them just in this in this tutorial. So it, it just it, it lessens the confusion confusion for me. But look at the website, the Plotly website, and you might find other ways. And we'll we'll look at some of these in future videos. But stick, I stick with this. But look look what what works for you. So let's just rotate uh, these labels at the bottom. You know, January, February, March are quite sh quite small here, so they they fit in with this big chart that we have here. But sometimes you have long categorical variable names here, data point values here, and and we've all seen plots where these names actually you know start printing on top of each other. And the easiest way to get rid of that is of obviously to shorten the data point values, these the your sample space uh, values. But uh, sometimes it's not possible, and you just want to rotate them. And look at this, and that's the reason why I like these dictionaries, because look at this, I have layout again, which is a dictionary, key value pair, here's another key value pair. But now I have two th elements here in this value side of the x-axis being the key and the value being another dictionary. And inside of that dictionary, there are two key value pairs. Title is months and the tick angle is minus 20. I don't put that inside of quotation marks because it's not. Uh, uh, this is just a value, numerical value. So I'm going to say minus 20, and that rotates at negative 20 degrees. And my y-axis is still all the same. So let's run that. And if we scroll down, we see we have this negative 20 degree uh, from, from the horizontal. It's tilted down negative 20 degrees. So if you have these long words and sentences there, you know they can all fit in because of that angle. Now let's color these bars. The blue is fantastic. I like this color, but you are free to do what you want. So I'm going to just change my trace here. It's still a bar, high level bar chart. I still have the X axis values being categorical, January, February, March. I still have my Y values being numerical, 10, 11, 14. But now I'm going to change the marker. I'm going to introduce this marker. And again, it's a dictionary, but this is a, another way just to do a dictionary. So I'm going to call this dict here. And the first thing I want to pass is color, and the color is going to be a list. And this list refers to the elements as you pass them on the x-axis. So I have one, two, three elements, January, February, March. I've got to pass three colors here. And I'm going to use this format. Note that I have these quotation marks. They can be single or double. They're single in this instance. But it's RGBA. RGBA means I can... I can also pass a fourth value here, which would be transparency. Zero being fully transparent, one being completely opaque, and anything in between. So it's red, green, and blue channel, and then opacity. So RGBA, and then parentheses, 255, that's maximum on the red, 
zero for blue, uh, green and zero for blue and full full opaqueness. So value of one there. The second one is 204, 204, 204. So that's going to be this light gray and it's going to be totally opaque and again totally opaque. So January is going to be this red color and March and April is going to be this light gray color. And the data is still the trace. Now I can't just use the ones I used up before because data referred to, to a different trace and I've changed the trace here. So I've just got to do data equals trace again as a list element. And then the layout exactly the same and I'm passing this dictionary to iplot. Nothing new there. And now you can see these beautiful colors because I can now have January being this red and the other colors being this light gray. Fantastic. Now, why is this one red and these ones gray? Well, I might want to indicate to my audience why this was done. So I can actually change this hover text. Remember, if I hit this one, show closest data on hover, it's going to do both the x-axis and y-axis in one little uh, tooltip there, January or, or hover text there, January 10. And if I do that, it's just going to highlight them separately. Now, hover text means I can individualize every element that I hover over to have its own text. So uh, we've had marker, we've seen that. So I'm introducing a new argument here to the bar, to bar here, text, and I've got to do it individually. So the red one's going to be below target, above target, and above target. Everything else is the same. Let's run that. And now if I hover, I see this extra text appear in this hover. So that was, I put it 10. And that's below target, and that one was above target, and that one is above target. So you can see you can build in this beautiful narrative here because you can put a, a, a lot of uh, information in this text if you really want to, to draw attention to what's happening here to inform your audience. So that's fantastic. So let's move things up just with a grouped bar chart. And now I want to have two sets of elements on here. And uh, so I've changed my computer variable to trace 0 and trace 1. And with a bar chart, be careful now because we want the same s sort of space for both. So I've got January, February, March and January, February, March. And I've got my Y values 10, 11, 14 as before. And the second Y is 12, 13, 17. But now I'm going to add a name because I need to tell Plotly that these two things are separate. So I'm going to say name equals last year and this name equals this year. So you can well imagine that I'm just going to take this year's data and compare it to last year's data. That might be interesting. And now look how data has changed. I'm now passing two elements to this list. Still got to be a list, still inside of square brackets. So I've got trace zero and trace one. The layout is going to be exactly the same, but I'm introducing this new key value pair of bar mode. And the bar, the bar mode that I want you to use here is group. So what it's going to do, it's going to group January and January, February and February, March and March. Hence, they've got to be the same. And then I'm still going to use this dictionary to pass to iplot. And now they've been grouped. And we see last year in blue and this year in orange. That will be the default colors. And you see that they are indeed grouped. So I've got this year and last year, this year and last year, this year and last year. A beautiful way just to do that. Now we needn't group them like this. We can stack them as well. And here I have exactly the same thing. But instead of bar mode being grouped, I've made bar mode being stacked as the key value pair here. And if we run that, we see that now we now have this stacked version of it. But if I hover, you know, you can still see that this year is, is 12 and last year was 10. You don't have to go to the X axis in your mind and your audience have to mentally try and see where's that top and subtract from the 10 to see that it actually gets to 12. No, no. Plotly makes it brilliantly easy with your hover. You can give a beautiful presentation just to hover over these and explain. So that's our first tutorial on Plotly my all-time favorite library for plotting inside of Python, but inside of other languages as well. And uh, a nice introduction for you. Start playing with this and we'll carry on with this playlist on YouTube and I'll introduce you to a lot more uh, plotting using Plotly for Python. Before you do go there, please subscribe to this channel. For all the information that I'm trying to get you, hit that notification button, the little bell there, to let you know when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot.